Good evening, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Tiger Bite, the weekly preview and review show of Glasgow Speedway. I'm Derek Smith, and to take me through the preview and review of the course of the last week or so, I'm joined by a wise man from the East, Speedway Stars Glasgow correspondent, Ryan Copeland. Hello to you, Brian. Good evening, Derek. Good to join you once again. Thank you, Brian. And for the eagle-eyed viewers out there, you might notice we are uh, an enhanced enhanced format tonight. We're uh, trialling a new cutting-edge software tonight for Tiger Bite, which we hope will uh, enhance the product and make Brian and I look a bit more human than we often have in the past. Brian, we're going to have a quick look back, and it will be just a quick look back to action over the past week or so, Tiger's visit to Ipswich and the Fours on Sunday. And then, of course, look ahead to and build up to the Scottish Derby, which is uh, much awaited this Saturday night on, on a number of levels. Um, and to help us preview the uh, Saturday's encounter, we're going to be talking very shortly to Edinburgh's Eric Rees and Josh Pickering, and indeed to Tiger's very own Nike Luna. Brian, a quick look back uh, to last week, uh, last week's Tiger Bite. We were big enough up in previewing the Tiger's trip to Ipswich. We weren't quite sure what reaction we would get from the witches. In the end, it was a positive one for them. And uh, for only the second time this season, Tigers returned pointless. Yeah, I know we spoke to Richie Hawkins, the Ipswich team manager, last week. And um, you got the sense that he, he definitely saw that one as a bit of a, um, a, bit of a banana skin for them, potentially. Um, it was it was off the back of, obviously, all the um, drama surrounding their potential team changes that then didn't happen. So, um, yeah, it was one of those where we weren't quite sure what was what was going to happen. I mean, when you look at the results, I, I wouldn't, uh, you know, when you, when you see what Ipswich scored, Danny King obviously got a maximum. Barring that, you, you know, you, you look at there's been potentially some opportunities throughout the meeting for us to pick up some points, but it just didn't really happen. And it, it just seems to be one of those nights where nothing would really go our way. And, Unfortunately, we just couldn't get close enough to them um, to, to take any points away from uh, from Foxhall. But um, like you say, possibly a little bit of a reaction from from their riders um, and our guys just having a bit of an off night. Yeah, I, I would suggest uh, Tom Perry's absence at reserve was probably critical. Uh, I would have gained us more points from those positions. But uh, that's done and dusted. We can do nothing about that. But it's good to know that should we have to return to Foxhall for whatever fixture uh, towards the end of the season, then... Uh, we, we have some further strength to, to be in. Uh, and on then to Sunday, Sunday the uh, the fours were staged at Peterborough. It's not been a happy tournament for the Tigers through the course of our history. And uh, unfortunately, that record, that barren record, continues. Yeah, it's, it's difficult to put your finger on why we've never really come away with anything from that particular competition. When you look at some of the high, you know, high hitters we've had down the years, um, some of the heat leader duos and things that we've had, and we still never seem to have been able to challenge at that meeting. Um, I know Peterborough probably isn't a favour track for some of our riders. We didn't go particularly well there in the, the league match earlier this season, and we've kind of struggled there over the last couple of years. Um, funnily enough, Nike Luna's favourite track in Britain is at Peterborough. Um, but, you know, I, when you... I think um, when you look at the rest of the guys' scores, you know, Nike, Nike bag three, which is possibly, you know, roughly what you'd expect. But obviously Dan struggled a little bit. Um, I know he's had a busy schedule of late, so maybe that's had a, a part to play and was, you know, being called in at last minute can't have helped with Richie Worrell's absence. And I, I know that, that Aaron and, and Richard, uh, Richard Blossom will be disappointed in, in their um, scores as well. Um, it looked as though it was actually going to, go our way because Richard went out and won his first heat and you thought that was a, the perfect way to start but after that we just couldn't get a heat win and um, you know it's, it's the kind of competition where if you, you don't go at the start and you're not competitive in the first couple of bends you're, you're probably not going to challenge um, you know there's, there's strong riders throughout a competition like that similar to the pairs in, in many ways and um, you've got to be really on top of your game and it just doesn't seem like we were um, and I know that one or two of the guys have been a bit frustrated with their form of late, um, taking a little bit of a dip. So um, perhaps a, an ideal opportunity to put that right this Saturday. Yep, we send our congratulations to Peterborough. Minus Jack Holder, of course, for uh, lifting the silverware around their home patch. OK, that's a whistle-stop tour of what's happened over the, the past seven days. Let's immediately look ahead, Brian, to, I would suggest, a mouth-watering event on Saturday night. It's actually been, it's the 16th of July was the last time We've seen any speedway action at Ashfield, and uh, there must be many speedway-starved folk out there desperate to see speedway at all. Never mind 
a Scottish derby. Yeah, it's unbelievable that we're we're in the middle of the summer and we've we've almost gone a month without a, a match. I know that's certainly not for the want of trying on behalf of the, the club. I know they've been trying to, to arrange fixtures and obviously we've had a couple of rain offs as well. So you know, things haven't really gone our way. So yeah, des- people desperate to see Speedway and what better way to, to you know get back in action than against Edinburgh and a, a top of the table clash. Um yeah, and I think I think it's a really mouth watering tie. Obviously Edinburgh are without Sam Masters, which is a real shame because he's been on a uh, real excellent form this season. And I know Ashfield isn't his favourite track, but he's still a, a guy you can rely on for some big points. Um, so it's a shame that they're missing him. That maybe takes a little bit of their uh, potency away, but you know they've still got plenty of strength throughout that team. And if we, if we were to slip up at any point, then I'm sure they'll be ready to bounce. Well, earlier, Brian, I managed to catch up with Edinburgh's uh, Eric Rist and Josh Bickering, and they got a, an insight into the Edinburgh camp. Leading to you guys. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Joining me from Germany. So first things first, on a Tuesday night in uh, in August, what are you both doing out in Germany this week? Yeah. Well, I live in Germany, so uh, you know, um, I always go home when I got a couple of days off in the UK. And Josh, yeah, he just came with me because we're gonna do some practice tomorrow. And I've got a little track at home where we rode today and on Thursday. So, um, yeah, just do a lot of riding and then come back to Edinburgh on Friday. Excellent. So, uh, taking advantage of uh, a mini break in the, the fixtures, I guess. Both of you uh, have been busy in recent weeks. You in particular, Eric, given your doubling up slot with Leicester in the Premiership. Are you quite happy with your, uh, your schedule at the minute? Is it keeping you fully busy? Yeah, I mean... Uh... Yeah, it's pretty busy with uh, doubling up in the UK and I started to ride in Poland as well and then I have a couple of meetings in Germany. So last month was pretty busy. Um, yeah, I'm happy with it. Um, keeps me going. Um, it's even better when you when you're in like when you enjoy it and I do. And yeah, when you're happy for what you're doing, then things go good and they did in the last couple of weeks. So yeah. Been good. good. Good stuff. Enjoying your enjoying your work, Eric. I was going to ask, does does more speedway mean less long track for you? Yeah, well I stopped long track this year. Um I've been I've been world champion last year and then I just I didn't have any motivation anymore to do it again. So I I decided because I just asked myself what I want to do the next next couple of years and I couldn't imagine riding long track for one one more year even. So uh, I decided to stop and focus on the speedway, and it works out for me because it um, helps me a lot to improve on speedway. Good, Josh. I was just thinking, Josh, you, you've come Scotland, the UK, Germany, Germany this week. You've come a long way since uh, that phone call from Edinburgh many months ago to offer you a, a team place here in the UK. Um, are you living the dream, Josh? Are you enjoying the experience of being in Europe? Yeah, I wouldn't say my dream, but I'm definitely living my dream. Um, yeah, I just really enjoy racing my motorbike and riding my motorbike. So um, any chance I can get to um, ride more, I, I definitely will. It's um, it's a bit tough in Scotland to get practice everywhere or anywhere, to be honest. But um, yeah, when Eric worked out, he was going home and he, got, he said to come out. So just come out and do some more riding and. It's sometimes when um, you sit around for a, a week after Friday night and you don't race until the next Friday night, you've got a lot of time to think and it's sort of, it works sometimes when you think, but sometimes you overthink. And um, I just believe that the the more riding I can actually do and the less thinking I have to worry about it, the better I'm going to be off. So um, mm. yeah, it's, it's going to be good and it's, it's good here. I like it here and I'll come here more often if I can, to be honest. Good. Josh, is it possible at all to put your finger on what has been the, the single biggest challenge, I guess, to uh, to uh, get over from, from down under and uh, earn a living over here in the in the UK? Probably leave all the family behind, to be honest. Um, yeah. Just real family orientated, all our family, and we're all very close. And um, just a few dramas that's happened of recent with um, 
my uncle passing away last week, just things like that. It, it makes you uh, realise really how far away from home you are. So yeah, the busier I can be now until we go home, the better. It's better than sitting around and and um, thinking about other things, you know. So if I can keep yeah. riding, I'd, I'd much rather do that. And, and if you don't mind me saying, Josh, you're your first season in the UK and you're running a, a four and a half point average at the moment. And uh, I dare say you would always want that to be higher, of course. But compared to an awful lot of riders in their debut seasons, you're doing rather well. I just wondered um, from your own point, from your own point of view, what's been the biggest, the biggest learning for you riding Speedway full time in, in Europe? Well, I can't really put out anything to say. Um, there's one thing in particular that's a big learning curve, but just, just everything, mate, just going to different tracks all the time and, and no practice or anything like that, just straight into it. It's, um, yeah, it's pretty tough, especially when you're up against guys that it's, you know, they're the master of that track. So um, it's it's hard to get used to. And sometimes, yeah, it's, yeah, I don't know. I'm, all I know is that I've set a goal to, at the start of the year, I want to at least be my five-point average. So um, I'm going to make sure that's going to happen by the end of the year. I'm just going to knuckle down and finish it off on a high, I hope. But, um uh -huh. Yeah. And, looking, and looking back, Josh, looking, looking back on uh, how things have worked out for you and uh, you know, the people that surround you, etc., uh, uh, would you acknowledge landing quite lucky, arriving at Edinburgh oh, as your first UK club? Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Um, where we live in with, like, I brought my girlfriend over here with me as well and, and we're welcomed into Stephen Jammer's house, no issue there and... and um, we get on like we are family as well, so it's it's a busy house, and at home it's even busier. So it, it's good to sort of um, do the same thing and stuff like that. And it, it's great that I'm not very far from the track, but um, it just it gets a bit hard sometimes when you you know you race a Friday night, you get your bikes done on Saturday, and then you have to think what do you need to do for the next six days if you're not racing. You know, like yeah, so, yeah. Um, and. And where it might look like that me gating isn't a hundred percent and stuff like that, that's the that's the biggest thing in speedway like yeah. Well for me it is at the moment because I know I'm as quick as anyone there. It's just the first five meters off the start and, and it's not because I do it wrong, it's just because they're doing it another three or four times a week more than what I yeah. do. So mm -hmm. it's it's hard, especially your first year, I think. Um I wanna my goal is to go home, have a, a very um I want to finish the season off here first with Edinburgh and then I want to have a very good season at home so I can hopefully um, try and land an elite league spot next year and um, just double up and just do as much riding as possible. So, Excellent. Good. Uh, very good. Good, good ambition, uh, Josh. Eric, of course, you are competing in both uh, leagues or top tiers in, in British Speedway uh, with Leicester and Edinburgh respectively. Now that you've um, been able to ride at both those levels, Eric, let, let me ask you the question. Is there, is there much difference, Eric, between both of those leagues? Um, not really, to be honest. Um, I don't know. I don't feel any difference, really. Um, I mean, in the, in the top league, there are a couple of riders. There are a couple of GP riders. Um, yeah, they they are still on a bit a higher level, so but that's good for me. I like that, you know, to compete with even better opponents because I can learn from it and get better. But yeah, um, not much difference anymore. I, I guess um, I, I I think the the Premier League is often even harder because the because because the clubs like. Yeah, pretty much every club they got su such a good advantage at home, and they're so good at home. And yeah, but I don't feel much uh, much difference now for me. I just uh, I just do I just do my job. I like my job, and I don't I don't worry where I ride. For me, it's every every meeting is the same, you know. That's a great attitude, Eric, and and it shines through from you. I've heard you. In an interview before saying exactly the, the same thing. Let's turn attention, if you don't mind, to Edinburgh's fortunes this season. So the Monarchs pretty much consistently since the start of the year have been riding high at the top of the championship. And of course you're still up there holding a, a playoff spot at the moment. Um, can I ask you about your to turn a, your, your or share your thoughts, I guess, on last Friday's results. So it, it was the first time this season Edinburgh have lost at home 
a very good Sheffield side, of course. Um, can, can you guys make sure that's a one-off this season? Uh, yeah, we'll try. I mean, uh, you can't rule out anything, to be honest. Yeah, well, as you said, we've been, we've, I think we've been uh, at uh, number one and two all the time in the in the league, and uh, yeah. We lost one meeting at home now. It was a bit unlucky because Sam got injured. Our number one got injured during the meeting. So we lost his points. Um, personally, I, I made some mistakes as well. I, I won my first two heats and I couldn't get out of the start anymore after that. So the track got quite slick. And, well, the Sheffield the Sheffield team... They uh, rode great. Yeah. They just rode better and better team won. I mean, it's one, it's one loss. And, you know, our standard... The standard of our team is still that we win every meeting, so I'm 100% sure we'll get back to that. Correct. And Eric, you already mentioned in the championship, there's lots of very good teams out there. And it doesn't get any easier, does it? Because week on week, another tough team turns up at your home track. Peterborough this Friday. And I think Ipswich a week on Friday. So things don't get any easier, do they? No, not really. But um, I mean... Of course, we have one loss at home now, but we won all the other meetings at, at home and we showed how strong we are. I think we've just been a bit unlucky last Friday. And uh, as I said, I think we'll we'll get back to winning. Uh, for me, nine points last Friday was pretty disappointing. That's not my standard. And I think uh, the others of, of the the other riders of the Edinburgh team, they were riding below their below their expectations as well. So um, we're all, you know, we're all keen to get back to, to scoring regarding to our standards again, and I'm sure we will keep uh, keep winning then. J- Josh, describe in your own words, if you don't mind, the uh, the loss of Sam Masters through injury. Uh, it's a bit disappointing. It's you um you can't go on and you can't really make too much comment to be honest. It's um at the end of the day we. Our sport that we do is it's up there with the most dangerous sports around, you know, and um these things happen. Yeah. You, you can't expect to get on a speedway bike and race a career and without injuries. Like it's it's gonna happen, it's just a matter of when and it's a bit unfortunate that it's it's happened to Sam to be honest. And um even six weeks ago when we lost Mark as well, it put a bit of a dent in the team and it's just it's just something we're just gonna have to deal with, and um, we're like we're getting into the busier period again in September. Yes, yeah. we've got nine nine or ten meetings, I think, and um, we've just got to see how it goes from there. But I'm I'm hope I, I believe Sam's was getting surgery or getting looked at anyway to um, speed the process okay. up. So I'll only be a few weeks without him. I hope, but um, good stuff. You've got a like with Sam. He's he's had, he's got a lot of experience and he's a great gator. So um, that's half the battle won there. So if he can stop the other number one or whoever he's versed and scoring points, then it's going to be better off for us. But I can't say that. Definitely uh, Sheffield outrode us the other night. You, there's no excuse there. But um, mm-hmm. if we didn't lose Sam in heat thirteen, like the boys were on a five one there and we're only two points down, so that would have evened it up. And um, we would have, you know, would have lifted the spirit again to to know that we're in it. But when that happened, and then um, did you win that race? No, I lost. Yeah, what'd you get? <laughs> I won against them. Oh, there you go. So <laughs> it went from being a five-one to getting a five-one against yeah. us. So um, it's sort of we knew at that stage then that I would. You can't say we we're, were negative or anything like that, but it's it's yeah. a hard hard thing to come back on. So um. And especially with them doing it so late on, it would have given them a very good boost. Like it, what could give us a boost at Ipswich? We um we had a feeling. Yeah, about, of course. Yeah, you know, after Sam got that tactical ride and and things like that, and we we got a few points back at around heat twelve. We just all had a feeling that we're going to do it, and um I I believe Sheffield had the same feeling, and it's it's an easy feeling to have, and and when you have it, it's it's a very good feeling because it just lifts lifts the whole team up, but. When we lose our number one rider so late on in the meeting and it's very close, it's um, it, it we probably start overthinking things and next thing you know we we got beat. But um, there's nothing to be ashamed of. They were a great side and and we tried our best, so that's all that matters. So. Absolutely, well said, Josh. So one of the big reasons, of course, we've invited you guys on to uh, Tiger Bite this evening is to preview Edinburgh's second visit of the season to to Ashfield to Glasgow. 
this Saturday night. And uh, last time around, back in May, it was a bit of a non-event, uh, if you don't mind me suggesting. And I think you, you guys yourselves suggested that you were second best on the night. How can you avoid a repeat of that this Saturday? Stay on past eight one for starters. <laughs> that was, you know, I had a crash and and um, probably not the best thing to do in such a big match. I suppose it's it's a lot of hype and it's mainly fans. There's no pressure off uh, the promoters or anything like that. But there's a lot of talk and and everyone knows that it's a bit of a rivalry. So um, a, a bit of pressure, but it wasn't too much pressure. And then I, I broke you know a few fingers and a bone in my hand and then. I couldn't really ride for the rest of the night, so I had to pull out. But um, I'm eager to go back there again, and and I believe I, you know, I, I can ride that track, and I will be able to ride that track. So we'll just have to wait and see for Saturday. It's not going to be an easy match, that's for sure. But um, I believe we've got Ludwig uh, guesting for us, so let's yeah. if he can, you know, score a few points, and we can all step up to the plate. And um, I want to do my part, that's for sure. So I'm looking forward to that. Eric, in the past, Sam Masters has suggested Ashfield is not amongst his favourite tracks. What's your own views of the Glasgow circuit, Eric? Is it one you look forward to racing on? Yeah, well, uh, I enjoy the track, actually, yeah. But, to be honest, uh, I, I enjoy riding every track. As I said, I, I, I love my <laughs> job. I just enjoy when, I, when I'm on my bike. But, yeah, last time at, at Glasgow, we all struggled. I think mainly because of the bike setups. I mean, uh, bike setups are so important to be with nowadays. And uh, I think pretty much every one of us struggled. I think Mark, Mark as we said, yeah. yeah, he scored 40 points and was the only rider who could win heats. Um, but yeah, I think we all learned from it. And um, we'll, you know, we we look forward to, uh, to get it right this time. And I look forward to it because I learned from the last time. So I'm going to try to to make it better this time. Excellent stuff. James, I could talk to you all night and I'll fire lots more questions to you, but uh, I'll, I'll let you go. Um, enjoy your practice tomorrow over in Germany and uh, good luck on Friday night against the Panthers. And I look forward to seeing you in the pits at Glasgow on Saturday night. Thanks very much for joining us on Thank Tiger Bite. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Live from Germany, Eric Rees and George Pickering in good form. Both nice lads. I've got a lot of time for those guys and uh, respectively, they've impressed me this season. George Pickering in his first UK season, running a four and a half point average currently, and Eric Rees eight and a half points are there about for Edinburgh. Yeah, barring the aforementioned Sam Masters, they're probably the two shining lights for Edinburgh this season. Um, obviously, Eric's continued his progress over the last couple of years and is starting to look like a real um, prospect now. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him, you know, push on and, and perhaps establish himself as, you know, a top European rider in the next few years. He's certainly got the potential and a really exciting rider to watch as well. He's he's had a few hairy laps around Ashfield in the past, but uh, so that it'll be, it'll be good to see him back around our track on Saturday. And like you say, Josh Pickering again, you know, brought in a bit of an unknown. Um, it's, it's, you know, a lot of Australians have come over here and found it difficult to adapt to the UK. Josh kind of came over and hit the ground running. He's maybe not quite found his best form of late, but... Um, you know, I think that's probably a compliment to himself and the, the form he showed early in the season. Um, and a real, you know, real prospect in the reserve as well. Um, I think he still lines up there. So, um, you know, he, he could have a big part to play on Saturday night. So both Edinburgh riders are claiming they have no hang-ups about the previous result back in May and both relish the opportunity to tackle the Tigers once again. From a Glasgow point of view, Brian, in recent weeks, I'm going back perhaps to the away trip to Workington, a couple of weekends ago, our defeat to Ipswich last week, the performance at the fours. Some supporters perhaps are uh, pinpointing a, a potential slump in, in form a little bit. And uh, a lot of the riders, of course, are busy. They, they, are, they are racing elsewhere in other leagues, etc. Um, hopefully, no better way to bounce back than a, a derby win on Saturday night. Yeah, I think the the slump in form. I suppose I, I can you know I can see where that's coming from. Um, it's the first time we've lost two league matches in a row. Um, working to the nip switch. That's you know that's that's perhaps skewed by the fact that we haven't had a, a home meeting in the last few weeks. Um, you know we, we haven't managed to build up momentum. Home meetings for us are a good confidence builder for you know some of the younger guys in particular. Um, 
and, and even the likes of Richard Lawson, who I know has, has been a bit frustrated with his own form and hasn't really been able to put a finger on where it's, it's gone wrong in the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, get, getting some laps in now in Ashfield, you know, these guys go out and, you know, score 13, 14 points every week at Ashfield. And when you've not got that and you're not racing around your home track for weeks on end, it must be difficult because you're having to adapt to different away tracks um, and you're not going there with the confidence that you've built up built at home. So hopefully a run of fixtures at home now. I know we've got the... Um, We've got this Saturday, and then I think the following week is the, the British Youth Championship, which of course visits us, which is a highlight in itself. But it, you know, it, it doesn't probably doesn't help our guys' momentum in in, in some respects. Um, so it's important that we can go out on Saturday, put in a really strong performance, and and perhaps try and take that into next Thursday's away match at Redcar, which could be a really big one in terms of our our sort of um, attempts to finish top of the league. So a mouth watering derby clash to look forward to on Saturday night. And some extra pre-meeting entertainment, potentially. Hold that thought. We'll come back to that shortly. Um, just to balance, we've had uh, the inside view from the Edinburgh camp. And just to balance that, Brian and I were joined earlier by Nike Luna to give his view on all things Glasgow. OK, we are joined on Tiger Bite now, all the way from Finland, by Nike Luna. Good evening, Nike. Hello, Nike, thank you for joining us. Um, you taking a, a few days off over in your, your homeland uh, where you've got a break from the British schedule? Yeah, well, I had a meeting yesterday over here and uh, it went quite well, but now I just have two days holiday, so really enjoying it, yeah. Nike, sorry, there's been a bit of a lag in fixtures over here in the UK. Glasgow Tigers fixtures have been thin yeah. on the ground in recent weeks. Um, I noticed you took Aaron back home to Finland over the weekend, but uh, no no speedway in the end. Oh, yeah, that was disappointing. We we meant to have, like, Finnish league meeting, meeting on last Saturday, day before Peterborough, and, uh, mm-hmm. we, yeah, we flew over here, and uh, then it was raining be- before meeting, and, well, I didn't think the truck wasn't that bad, but uh, they didn't want to race, so it was rained off, but at least Aaron saw some... Finnish culture and places, so yeah, it was a good trip anyway. It's uh, good to get some sightseeing in during the season, I suppose, Nike. <laughs> you've yeah. been uh, you've been racing all over Europe this year. Um, of course, you're racing here in the UK and also over in Sweden. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing over in Sweden and the kind of uh, riders that you've been facing over there. Um, I believe you've been going up to head to head against a few of the top guys in the Grand Prix. Yeah, it's like totally different in Sweden. Like, oh, I always been watching telly and see them guys, and like this year, first time I ever meeting has face these guys what I see on GB, and it's giving me giving me boost when when I realize that I can I can face them and I can beat them on the track. So yeah, it's it's been a bit big colorful meet uh, season, but yeah. I'm, enjoying it over there and hopefully we're going to get to playoffs and make it to the finals. Nike, when you have teammates in your home pit bay, for example Jason Doyle and you know, guys of that standard, um, do, you, do you find these guys are, are good at sharing, sharing tips and uh, knowledge with you or do you, know, do you, are they quite receptive to that? Yeah, definitely. They're like, they've been giving me big helps in, in a pitch and like on the track as well, like you you can't think that they are only superstars, but they are not there just like every other lap riders and they they give you very good tips and it's good to listen to those guys when you like know that they are telling the truth, yeah. Nick, when we look at what you've been up to for, for Glasgow, of course, we've had a couple of uh, meetings recently. Last Thursday, away to Ipswich and in the Fours Championship on Sunday at Peterborough. Um, a li- were you a little bit of a disappointment amongst the, the riders um, with the results at both of those meetings? Because um, I know we've been you know, hoping to, to try and get some points at Ipswich and then perhaps challenge for the, the trophy at Peterborough on Sunday. Um, a bit of frustration with the, the results? Yeah, well... We always knew that it's going to be difficult at Ipswich. They are a strong team at home and uh, we just couldn't get it like all together and didn't get any points. So we all was disappointed and we still all tried our best. But 
just Ipswich was uh, for the team. So that's hard boy. And then Ken Peterborough, yeah, I thought that we're going to be strong before the meeting. But like then Richie obviously was injured before the meeting. And uh, well, Dan can do well, but I would still would think that Richie would be stronger than him. But yeah, that was just a bit unlucky. But that's that's how it goes. And no can do now, yeah. Now, watching your, your, your scoring and your forum for Glasgow in the past month or so, um, I would suggest you're riding high on confidence at the moment. You seem to be chasing hard once again, scoring points, skating quite well. Would you agree with that? And uh, what would you put that upturn and forum down to? Yeah, like I started my season like very big points and I was maybe thinking after those that like, uh, I'm like expecting too much from me, but like now when I'm keeping my form, like this is seven to ten points, it's much better. Like it's better to score them those points every meeting than some points. Sometimes not that good, and sometimes big points. But yeah, I'm, I've been trying to like keep on one pace and just just be confident, and that's that's been working quite well. So. Yeah, we are going on the right direction. We just, I still know that I, I like uh, a lot to give, but it's coming later. Mike, I know you mentioned you're going to fly back to the UK tomorrow. Show, us, uh, show the viewers some of the beautiful scenery you're going to leave behind. Give us a, give yeah, us a look sure. around. Yeah, this like Kotka in Finland. It was quite nice sunset earlier, but well now it's getting getting down. But like when you if you see those lights there on the yep. other side of this kind of lake, well this is seeing a lake. But anyway, I live like just there on next to those lights, so it's quite nice here. And it's still warm, like it's what it's like twenty past ten, and it's still twenty degrees, and like I can still hang out without without freezing. So it's, yeah, nice. <laughs> Brian, it, Brian, it reminds me a bit of Largs, a place you know well. <laughs> That's, yeah. yeah. It, it, it could almost be broadcasting live from the, the seafront there at Largs. Uh, we have Dini's, uh, a nice ice cream or something there. Uh, <laughs> um, you, you were back in the, uh, the sort of colder weather at the weekend night for the, the big meeting against Edinburgh. Um, nice to get a home meeting again after a few rain-offs and a few empty weeks. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's going to be a hard one after this big break, so we really need to push hard to, to win that meeting. But yeah, I'm looking forward. It's always nice to race in Glasgow with the, with the home fans supporting us. So yeah, it's going to be a good one. Now, you've, had, you, you've experienced a few Scottish derbies now, and you know, fans of Glasgow and Edinburgh big, big up those, mat, those meetings. We like to think it's the biggest derby in the UK. I'm quite sure it is, actually. Um, does that add any spice, any pressure to use a rider to want to win for the for the club? Mm, it's not giving me more pressure. Like, Of course, I. it's maybe wrong to say like I want more to win, but when you win, it feels better. Like, <laughs> it so stands in the, in the stadium. So, yeah, it's a it's good meeting to race as well. And Nike, when we when we look at your form, you know we've touched on the fact that you've been very consistent this season in terms of your scoring. What's the next target for you um, on a personal level um, in terms of your your performances? Because it seems as though you've kind of managed to to settle into British Speedway now quite nicely. You you score consistently at most tracks. What's the next step for you? Uh, yeah. Well, now when I'm confident, like I I know that I can score them points, but. I still have that one pitch to give more to like race a bit, bit more harder. And now when I can feel like I'm feeling good on a bike and I, I really know what I'm doing and how to do how to do this. And now after that I can give that bit more boost and score them big points confidence every every week. So that that's what what what's the plan and yeah obviously Maybe later I want to go to higher league in England as well, and maybe Poland someday. So still got targets to aim, but yeah, it's 
it's getting there. I just don't want to rush and ruin up everything. So just go with the flow, kind of. <laughs> Mike, it looks like darkness has descended in Finland. I know you're a couple of hours ahead of us back in the UK. We will let you go and enjoy your last evening in your homeland. Okay. Uh, safe trip back to Glasgow, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in action at Ashfield on Saturday night, Mike. Thanks for joining us. All right, thank you very much, and uh, see you guys later. Thank you for taking Mike me. joining us from a dark but beautiful looking uh, background and a backdrop in Finland, Brian. Yeah, just like being in Scotland, I'm sure with the 20 degrees at 20 past 10 at night. Uh, <laughs> not jealous at all, but uh, no, Nick's been in, in good form this season and he seems very happy at the moment. You know, he's, he's, he's got a smile on his face constantly. Um, I know he tends to have one even if he's not <laughs> riding so well, but he seems he seems extra positive at the moment and um, really good to see. I know that these, his results and uh, races in, over in Sweden are really having a, a big impact on his confidence at the moment. Um, you know, making him realise that he's he's good enough to go out and compete with some of the top guys. So, um, really great to see him progressing this season. And, and I think he's been one of our most consistent riders this season as well, which is really good for someone as young as him. Now, off camera, Nick uh, sent his apology because we asked him to do one thing, Ryan, didn't we? Apart from answering some questions, we asked Nick to name check our supporter name check winners from the last two weeks and the long story as to why we haven't uh, provided those name checks uh, before now but anyway the winners to catch up with things over the last two weeks we send our congratulations to Alan McKenna Sr who's always on the telly and to Dot McManus so congratulations to you Alan and Dot name checked live on Tiger Bite sorry it wasn't from a real celebrity though we did ask Knight but uh, you couldn't remember the names and answer all the questions if you want to be next week's name check winner, remember to comment, like, or share between now and next week. Yep, and uh, I think you, you mentioned, Derek, about the prospect of some entertainment uh, this Saturday night. I don't know if you've got more details of that. I've got some details. So I'm hoping that uh, watching tonight's Tiger Bite will be someone of an Edinburgh persuasion. Ideally, either Scott Frame or Graham Munsey, the EMTV presenters, because Brian Copeland and Derek Smith, presenters of Tiger Bite, are throwing down the gauntlet to you, AEM TV. Scott and Graham, we want to challenge you on Saturday night before the main event to a tandem race, one lap around Ashfield. Winner takes all, all the praise, all the glory. And here's the catch, Scott. We know that you have recently done a, some chari a charity walk. Congratulations on your fundraising efforts for the Stroke Association. If Brian and I win on Saturday night, I will donate twenty pounds to your charity, Scott. If you if EMTV beat Tiger Bite, I'll give you thirty pounds. How about that? So you need to get back to us before Saturday night and we'll make all the arrangements. Brian and I have not been in training, so don't be afraid. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that, that will pack them in on Saturday, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, a few more through the door for that. Um I I'm a wee bit worried because um I don't know how long before the, the meeting starts that they actually do the race, but um, it might take us a fair while to get around that track, so they might have to delay the start of the meeting. <laughs> it might be the slowest lap ever. Oh, anyway, let, let's, the let's, to pick us up. <laughs> let, let's see if the gauntlet is picked up by Messrs. Frame and Munsey. Anyway, Brian, listen, we're going to wrap up there. Um, so listen, all roads lead to the Peugeot Ashfield Stadium this Saturday night. Tapes up at 7pm. Gates will be open from 5.30 or thereabouts. Please, please, please make sure that you go along to fill your nostrils and vent your voice at long last, all, all your frustrations about not having any speedway for the best part of a month. Let all of that release in a noisy fashion at Ashfield on Saturday night. Glasgow versus Edinburgh. Please be there. Thanks for your company. See you at Ashfield on Saturday and on Tiger Bite again next week. Good night. Good night. <laughs>